In light of Black History Month, Long Beach Transit has been focusing on spreading awareness of what Black History Month means. And so today we have joining us here, Supervisor Transit Operations of Long Beach Transit, Bruce McCall Jr. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Just blessed to be here. Well, thank you so much for joining us. You know, you've created an NGO called Urban Reset that we really want to dive into. But first of all, since Long Beach Transit has actually been really spreading the awareness and focusing on the impact of Black History Month, what does Black History Month actually mean to you? Um, it's just a cultural thing to where, um, you know, my, my, my father was a hard worker. My mother is still a hard worker as well. So um, it's very personal. Yeah, it's just it's kind of like a daily a daily thing, you know, dealing with uh, understanding who I am as a black man, but then also um, just still being open and available to other cultures and different things. So it's an ongoing thing, but very positive. You know, it's, it's a good feeling. So, yeah. So um, obviously in the past year, we've experienced quite a lot of a turmoil and there's been quite a few protests. So do you feel like there's been a bit of a shift in terms of how Black History Month is viewed? Is there any difference in feelings or anything that you've noticed? Yeah, definitely. I feel like um, because of, I mean, a lot of things that happens in, more in the violence setting, um, a lot of things have came to light, you know? So it, I, I think it challenged people to, who didn't understand culture or even like Black culture to be more compassionate, you know? So, and then also it challenged, you know, the people of the Black community and just Africans and just different things to kind of understand who you are, you know? So if it didn't challenge you to be more compassionate, it at least allows you to kind of like visualize who you are as a, a person culturally and different things. So um, I think it was a positive thing in the midst of all, all the, you know, maybe negative things that happened and violence and different things, so. It's, it certainly did shed a light and spread awareness yeah. and a ripple effect across the world. Um, so how does Long Beach Transit tie in with diversity how do you think it's also acknowledging Black History Month? Um, they just try to make different options available. Um, more, more now than with our new, uh, with our CEO, Mr. McDonald, I think he really cares about the community. He cares about people. Um, so as, um, you know, Jocelyn, our marketing, they, they highlighted different things every month. So it just create different opportunities, you know, for the operators and the staff. And um, so I believe that they're just doing things that are um, just setting a tone to where, you know, you know, we're all we're all alike, but, you know, they give us a chance as far as culturally, because we have different races and different ages and different things. It's very, bi, you know, biracial and cultural. So um, they just try to, like, attend to, to our needs and stuff, which is a great for a community, for a company. So, yes, well, month to month, we've been following Long Beach Transit, of course, and spoke to McDonald as well, Mr. McDonald, which was uh, pretty awesome. And to really see how engaged they are with the community and. For yourself, you've set up an NGO called Urban Reset. So tell us about that. How did that come about and why was it so important to you to set it up? Um, well, I, I came from a social work background. Um, I was a child care worker for seven to eight years. And then while doing that, I was um, a sports coordinator for the sheriff's department. They had an after school um, program and their own nonprofit. Um, so yeah, I've just been around kids. I've been around people in the community. Um, so. Yeah, it's been my passion for years. Um, but then as of recently, just starting my company, um, I wanted to really dive into, you know, since I started Long Beach Transit, I wanted to kind of get back. I took a break from social work to go to transportation. And I missed that social work and that just being in the community aspect, which is why I started Urban Reset. And um, yeah, it's basically just a community organization. I try to get everybody together. And then we try to provide um, the resources as well as services, whether it's outreach and mentorship or if it's just providing the homeless food or you know self self kids or health health um just health items and different things so um it's really just trying to set a platform for people to just receive help and encouragement so wow. and you did that all in your spare time and given your history and experiences you obviously know the importance of having to be able to provide a safe space and opportunities for those in need. It's very admirable there. Thank you. I can't even say the word right now, admirable. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, 
So t tell us, do you, are you able to actually create any upcoming events or what is it that you're capable of doing now in this time with Urban Reset and how can people also support Urban Reset or get involved? Yeah, definitely. We have um, our first youth event of the year is going to be on March 12th. Um, so we're doing it's kind of like a unity and um, unity and teamwork art event. So basically, I'll be inviting 10 kids. Right now, there's a sign-up sheet on my um, on my Instagram, The Urban Reset. So we have different links. And um, also, as well, I'll, I'll be uploading onto my website, which is urban, www.urbanreset.net. So I'll have that information on there. But that event will just basically be, I'm going to have a, um, a guest artist who's coming in and just showing the kids how to do different cultural pictures. And it'll be one per particular picture, but it's really just a time of just kind of talking and seeing what, what their challenges have been during um, quarantine and different things. And then just to kind of get their minds moving. And then we'll be providing food, uh, which one of my coworkers, so was, he's donated the food, him and his wife. So it's just kind of like a community, you know, effort. And um, a youth enrichment event as well. So that's a fair that's going to actually be in the, um, the city of Long Beach, and that'll be on March 20th. And I partnered with Long Beach Resources and Cray Project and Urban Society and multiple um, Brick Community, which is my brother's um, foundation. So that's going to be just we're providing workshops for enrichment ideas and enrichment, um, just growing things for youth and stuff to keep their minds moving. So, yeah, there's a lot of different things that we have going on. It's going to be a busy month in March. So. Yeah. I can tell you're really ramping it up. I, I'm actually really enthralled to hear that because for one, you know, a lot of people have been obviously trying to be as safe as possible. So in mm -hmm. terms of safety, what kind of regulations do you have in place to be able to uh, create the event and have people also come together in a safe way? Definitely. So we, I mean, for the art event, we just, anything that we that I do, I'm trying to make sure the safety is the main key. So the first thing is just kind of mapping out different things. So for the art event, I was able to go into the facility where I'm going to basically just kind of map out spacing first. So we do spacing and then um, just kind of setting guidelines as far as the timelines and food and different things. So yeah, that's that's our main concern. And then for our youth enrichment event, we've already kind of mapped out location and time and as far as how many times the um, workshops are gonna go. So yeah, we're just very detailed as far as making sure that the kids stay safe and anybody who's participating, they feel comfortable with what they're doing as well as learning or growing and different things. So um, it's been challenging because we want to do and open it up for the public to where, you know, anybody can kind of just show up. But now we're it just challenges us, but it makes us where we can actually do more planning because we know how many people need have a need for a thing. So now we can kind of say, OK, well, we have to have it like ongoing so mm -hmm. if that makes wow. sense yeah, yeah. And in, in a way, it's a little bit more structured as well, because mm -hmm. you then know the certain amount of people that can be there and how much to supply for as well. But in terms of being able to allow that creativity and space and to be able to bring people together in such a setup is so wonderful. So I, I think and it, it sounds like it runs in the family. You're, you partnered up with your family, at, with your brother there. So remind us again, how can people, it is your Instagram at the urban reset. reset yes and then um i have on um my website is www.urbanreset.net so i'll be providing the information uploading the the most recent for the event so they'll be able to find it on there as well amazing well thank you so much bruce for sharing that with us and for really engaging the community here as well and creating more awareness within black history month at long beach transit as well uh, a quick announcement there before we do hop out on Tuesday at 9 to 10.30 a.m., the Downtown Long Beach Alliance is going to be hosting a virtual event on the Black experience in Long Beach, past, present, and future, with a panel to discuss the history and contributions of the Black community in Long Beach, as well as the past and present challenges it faces and what the future may hold for this community. So to register for this free event via Zoom, you can head over to downtownlongbeach.com com forward slash downtown dash discussion so that's on tuesday 9 to 10 30 a.m via zoom it is virtual and please do check out as well urban reset which bruce mccall has put together the ngo it is urbanreset.com 
Instagram at the Urban Reset. And of course, do follow up for more local news happening in Long Beach, longbeachlocalnews.com. And I'm Yasmin Tanras. Thank you so much for joining us here today, Bruce. Thank you for the opportunity.